education and adult learning is becoming increasingly borderless. The movement or trade in goods and services, including educational services, across international borders has become a key economic outcome of globalization. This video will discuss the impact of globalization and internationalization on adult education. During this video, please reflect on the following analysis questions. What is globalization and internationalization, and how does it impact adult education? What is the role of adult education and training within the context of globalization and internationalization? What models of internationalization are present in adult education in Canada? And what are the limitations of globalization and internationalization? Globalization is defined as the flow of technology, economy, people, values, and ideas across borders. It is having a profound impact on almost all aspects of society, including the nature and function of adult education. In relation to adult education, globalization can be defined on one hand in terms of the economic, technological, political, and societal forces opening access to 21st century adult education. On the other hand, it can also mean increasing the exposure of traditional adult learners to international experiences. The terms globalization and internationalization are often used interchangeably. Navarro explained that globalization is what is happening in the world. It is the disappearance of boundaries between peoples, countries, and issues, the easier and faster communication between all parts of the world, the homogenization of the world, and the interdependency of the world. Internationalization is what has to be done in order to adapt to this new system. Globalization has increased the rate of internationalization in adult education. In traditional post-secondary institutions, internationalization initiatives, including creating a more international curriculum, fostering opportunities for students to study abroad, encouraging faculty and student exchanges, increasing international student recruitment efforts, and exporting or importing programs. Evidence of increasing internationalization includes an increase in the cross-border activities of higher education institutions. Cross-border higher education is fueled in part by the growing worldwide demand for higher education and is characterized by increased mobility of students, courses, and program, and increased mobility of institutions across national borders. Cross-border higher education encompasses a wide range of modalities from face-to-face -face instruction to distance learning. Most post-secondary institutions believe that a cross-border or international experience is valuable to students in an increasing globalized world. A survey on the internationalization of higher education conducted by the International Association of Universities in 2005 ranked the increase in international knowledge and intercultural skills in university students, faculty, and staff members as the greatest benefit of internationalization. During the 20th century, most international students were undergraduates, and recent trends suggest that undergraduate international students are on the increase and may outnumber graduate international students in Canada. Internationalization also includes faculty mobility, such as short-term leaves, summer teaching in other universities, or sabbatical years abroad, as well as the hiring of academics trained abroad. There has also been an increase in institutional mobility, where Canadian institutions set up facilities abroad or create joint programs with local academic institutions. The majority of the mobility flows from north to south, and even very traditional universities are part of this new phenomenon. There is also growth in the delivery of programs to students who reside in other countries through distance education. Another common trend is the internationalization of curriculum content, which includes the presence of more international content in a variety of study areas. According to Go, there are three models that guide the internationalization of adult education in Canada. The first model, human capital development, is characterized by the training of individuals in foreign universities in areas perceived as economically relevant by the sending countries, by the host countries, and or by international agencies. This model is driven by labor forecasting, expecting that students will find a job in their field in their home country or in the host country after graduation. Student training may be funded by the sending country, by the host country, by international funding agencies, by the individual students, or a combination of the above. The second model, Export Commodity, understands foreign students as customers who contribute tuition and fees to the university in exchange for an educational service, which ranges from short courses, diplomas, undergraduate and graduate programs. Australia, the US, the UK, Canada, France, Germany, Japan, and South Africa are the top hosts to mobile students, who usually come from developing countries and gravitate towards business-related programs. A complementary strategy of this model is institutional mobility, establishing branches abroad. 
The third model, international cooperation and understanding, is premised on values of, of solidarity and social transformation, such as those programs offered by the Cody International Institute, which trains community leaders from Africa, Asia, and Latin America on cooperativism and community development. A few countries are quickly tapping into the so-called market of international students. The drive for international students as an income generation strategy can be traced back to the introduction of differential fees for international students in the early 1980s, first in the UK and soon after in other countries like Australia and Canada. The contributions to national economies are significant. For example, in Canada, in 2008 alone, the expenditures of international students amounted to $6.5 billion, surpassing the exports of lumber and coal. Given these figures, it's not surprising that the competition for international students is escalating. According to Fenwick, international students in Canadian adult education are vastly underrepresented in scholarly projects, meetings, and publications relative to Canadian students. Scholarly conferences in adult education, often labeling themselves as international, are concentrated in North America and Europe. These are prohibitively expensive for participants in the global south and fraught with practical difficulties such as obtaining visas. In addition, refereed journals and education are mostly in English, with most concentrated in the US and the UK, and non-English academics have reported difficulty getting published in these journals. Moreover, some believe that globalization has eroded the traditional role of governments in the education sphere, and issues such as quality, credibility, and responsibility are being blurred. While in most countries the national frameworks for quality assurance, accreditation, and recognition of qualifications take into account cross-border higher education, in many countries they are not prepared to address the challenges of cross-border provision. This makes students and other stakeholders more vulnerable to low-quality provision and disreputable providers of cross-border higher education. Globalization and internationalization is likely to remain a central long-term force in adult education, although the ways in which it manifests itself are likely to change. Open and distance learning is likely to become the most significant driver of cross-border provision. As this happens, challenges will arise as both institutions and governments attempt to control accreditation and globalize their accreditation systems. Please reflect on the following synthesis questions. What is your experience, if any, with globalization and internationalization within the field of adult education? Are there additional models of internationalization that you could see emerging in adult education in Canada? How might the limitations of globalization and internationalization be overcome? And how do you think globalization and internationalization will continue to impact adult education in the future?